Um, hello everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to tonight's lecture, um, Spatial Site and Model for Spatial Transformations in Istanbul. Uh, this talk is co-organized by Research Institute on Turkey, uh, Barnard and Columbia uh, Urban Studies, Architecture Department, and Columbia Global Centers uh, in Istanbul. Um, Research Institute in Turkey uh, is a grassroots research, research cooperative based in New York City and we are comprised of an um, interdisciplinary uh, group of researchers, writers, um, artists, architects, um, scientists um, and our key research areas are urban justice, uh, collective memory um, and labor and finance. And in this context um, I would like to introduce you to Orhan Esen. Um, Orhan Esen um, studied social and economic history at the Bosphorus University in Istanbul and continued with some studies of history and history of art and architecture in Vienna. He is a researcher, writer and publisher who is mainly focused on the rapid changes of the built environment and its architectural, social, political and ecological outcomes. Um, so I'm handing it over to Orhan now. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, to all those uh, three institutions who, uh, who made it possible for me to talk uh, here tonight uh, to uh, call the global centers in Istanbul, Colombia and Barnard, uh, architecture and uh, planning departments and research institutes in, uh, on Turkey. So um, I will uh, tonight uh, try to um, have a look at the urban transformations in Istanbul, uh, which has been occurring since 19th century, since uh, the uh, beginning of modernization. And we'll try uh, to frame it uh, with a term I have borrowed uh, from a Palestinian author, Salih Hanafi, spatial site, and we'll try to investigate. Uh, and of several examples of uh, harsh uh, urban transformation examples in Istanbul since the 19th century. Uh, how much we could apply this term, or if it uh, could give us some uh, say, uh, uh, usable uh, framework. Um, we have already met uh, Sari Hanafi uh, in the context of a book which was published uh, seven years ago. It's called City of Collision, uh, edited by Tim Dreams and Philip Misselwitz, called City of Collision on uh, Jerusalem and Principle of Conflict Urbanism. So I came across uh, his article there. And uh, so, uh, as I understand, the, um, the reason. I say the, uh, the major motivation behind uh, trying such a term is the following. Uh, the Nakba, uh, 1948, of uh, Palestine, is a, is a big disaster, uh, it's a big collective disaster in collective memory of the Palestinians. Uh, they have to leave their ancestral country. But, uh, on the other hand, it, it cannot be framed with the term genocide. Uh, it is, they have perceived it as a big crime, but uh, there's no language to describe what has happened. Uh, there's another term which is uh, often used, like ethnic cleansing, uh, which is indeed uh, a, a quite a, a general term. So uh, what has happened at the uh, particular in the early 20th uh, century, during uh, the time when most nation states evolved, this particular uh, from the Ottoman Empire, the pleasance took place everywhere. Um, but uh, what happened in Palestine is possibly something uh, more uh, than that. Uh, it has continued after the cleansing. And so the way it has continued was mainly uh, manifested through spatial politics, politics of the space. It, it has to do with erasing the memory in the whole space. So he deals with uh, lots of uh, issues like. For instance, it starts with changing toponyms, it uh, with erasing uh, settlements, but also erasing, say, uh, roads, uh, ancestral roads, and uh, at the top of the new uh, road network uh, comes uh, 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 comes up 
but also uh, changing of topography, changing of vegeta uh, vegetation, olive groves go and so uh, uh, pine trees are um, uh, planted and so on. So even if you would return back, so you will not recognize uh, that space anymore. So there's a total diversion. And indeed, this book has been uh, done by planners and architects. So therefore, it's also uh, so this is dealing with the uh, spatial politics. So if I look at the Istanbul uh, history, uh, so I've been dealing with Istanbul's history since 19th century, and uh, indeed the 19th century modernization of Istanbul has totally erased uh, what we might call the Byzantine Ottoman city. So uh, when you when you arrive at the uh, end of the 19th century, there's nothing at all left anymore, uh, what you might call an old town of Istanbul, except a few uh, monumental for public buildings. Uh, the 20th century has totally erased what has been left over uh, from the 19th century. And today, we are again dealing uh, with a process which we call urban transformation, and which is again uh, felt by most uh, say, uh, uh, <coughs> spectators of this process as a very uh, traumatic process, and it is being resisted, uh, resisted as well. So. Um, uh, we'll try to uh, kind of uh, do some uh, parallel reading. So this is uh, just a map of uh, territories which have been controlled by Palestinian and Israeli so all the time. But it's of course not just uh, this is just like a uh, black and white thing. It's of course it's, uh, it's more important to uh, deal with the events uh, inside it. So I try to just grasp a, a few uh, major let's say uh, lines. Um, so when would we call a process a, a spatial site? This is not in this way. It has not been, let's say, put uh, in word by uh, Panaf himself. But so it's kind of a second reading, maybe a uh, reading of it. So it has it takes place in time of uh, the harsh public ideological context, which also takes uh, war form. It's ethno-religious, but also the question uh, would be, for instance, uh, class conflict. Uh, and uh, manifestations of it also uh, might be uh, include in uh, this This appropriation is quite important. And uh, so within this whole uh, pol uh, polarized uh, setup, uh, whereas we can understand uh, this appropriation is a physical dispropriation, but also emotional or mental. So that uh, you are attached to uh, particular, uh, say, um, Manifestations of built environment, or also the nature, so as it manifests itself. So, for instance, uh, particular uh, uh, natural spaces, maybe holy stones, valleys, trees, whatever, uh, because this has been uh, it has become very evident in, in Turkey in the last years. Uh, all these hydroelectrical uh, power plant constructions, so they have been uh, kind of destroying natural uh, so, uh, spaces. Uh, there have been a lot of resistance to that, so it's uh, also a lot of that expropriation. It is a state of intervention that's important, and and it's mostly an intensification or continuation of a warlike situation. And it is mainly used to consolidate a uh, uh, the new reality that has maybe came, uh, that has came up uh, with the uh, conflict. But then you just intensify that. That is particularly the Palestinian situation uh, within the uh, state of Israel. Uh, at this point, because uh, we may think uh, immediately of the uh, Turkish situation, of course, Anatolia, which are inhabited by more than 30 percent by uh, non-Muslim populations, so, uh, the Greek and Armenian mainly. So uh, we do, uh, would uh, think uh, of this. But indeed. Uh, the uh, very first uh, revanchist uh, type of um, the reaction to uh, uh, the situation immediately after the war, uh, I would not necessarily call it a spatial site because you just have, let's say, kind of a, a, a population exchange, or also in the case of Turkey, Greece, the genocide in, uh, in uh, say, in the uh, Armenian case. But whatever happens is, you will uh, say, uh, let's take the Turkish group example, so you would continue inhabiting the houses. So you exchange population, the Greeks who go uh, over uh, leave their houses, Turkish population comes over and uses their houses. 
uh, in this first phase, what you simply do is you get rid of the symbolic existence. For instance, sure. this side you just kind of blow up the uh, churches, uh, church towers, and on the other side they blow up the minarets. But they may reuse them at church or, or, or mosque now, or as cultural center, or maybe as a barn. But whatever the building is, it's still there. Um, <clears throat> and you would reuse the houses as well. You would most likely kind of uh, make unrecognizable the, the graveyards. But except the graveyards and the temples, you would not touch. And you would indeed uh, reuse uh, the built environment, which is left over uh, by the other. So the spatial site goes beyond that. And indeed, uh, the Turkish example did not go beyond this until 1960. So until 1960, it was indeed, uh, it was, um, uh, it's made, uh, yeah, one more uh, last, uh, right, the naturalization of the, uh, of the process through selective criteria of public interest. What is it? So this is exactly uh, when it comes now to architecture and planning. So there is, of course, the, there's a new reality, there's a new society that emerged out of the whole, uh, let's say, ethnic cleansing situation. And now the new society has, of course, its needs. Population grows, a new network emerge, and so on. So now this new society does have its natural needs, and the architects and the planners do just meet these needs. And, of course, uh, it has also this component, uh, so that now the, the majority uh, the population uh, participates in this whole process. So how this has happened in, in the Turkish case, I will uh, deal with. Okay. <clears throat> so just uh, to... Uh, I will uh, go and highlight uh, briefly a few cases which would come to one's mind uh, when we uh, think of the uh, term spatial site, but I will go uh, quickly through them and I will indeed dwell on, uh, on a particular text. Uh, uh, <coughs> so this is now uh, just when, for instance, this is now the reality. So you have the Palestinian settlement and here you have the, uh, the, the old Palestinian and here the new Jewish settlements. Indeed, uh, the book uh, we did is, was been, has been dealing with the Eastern Jerusalem and the Gaza spread, uh, not Gaza, sorry, uh, the, the West Bank uh, situation mainly. And here the new built reality uh, has uh, all these uh, new colonies. This was a new road system. That's uh, quite an interesting point. Uh, so these uh, the new settlements, the new colonies, are indeed something like gated suburbia of Jerusalem. So they are mostly inhabited by commuters who have these express roads that they can get uh, fastly. Uh, uh, through these express roads to Jerusalem to work, and in the evening they can get back again, uh, back to their homes, which are settled inside uh, the West Bank uh, area. But these uh, roads are not accessible to uh, the local uh, West Bank uh, Palestinian population. There has been an interesting work done by an artist, I don't remember that name, if you have uh, Biennial, Zegar, Biennial. So um, they just tried to travel from the south of uh, the West Bank to the north, once using the express road system, it took them like less than two hours, and then they tried to do the exact same route from A to B, this time using the, the local Palestinian road with all these, you know, cul de sacs and going down into the valley to these uh, uh, smaller villages in and out, and it took them more than eight hours. So it's just two different parallel societies occupying the same space. They, they are not physically uh, the very same space. So it has to do with all this uh, network, with all this space politics. So if I look, of course, at such pictures, in both uh, the above and the uh, below may remind me of two things. For instance, they, um, maybe there's one case in Turkey that would remind us of the uh, West Bank situation. It's the island of former Imros, uh, which had been renamed after 1960 to Gökçada. This may be important. Uh, the Turkish uh, spatial politics took off after 1960 coup d'etat. So until 1960, it was mainly this classical reuse of the built environment. But after 1960, we start renaming the, uh, the toponyms. The, the, the names are changing. So Imros is just the, you know, just the, the way uh, we write in Turkish, like the, the Greek name. But now you see, uh, this is the Greek village. And now we have, we have the, the new settlements. The, uh, this is Yenibali Amli, for instance. Okay. So uh, indeed, very much the same uh, way. The new settlers from Turkish mainland come and begin to occupy uh, the island just uh, with the uh, difference that the Greek population has been uh, kind of expelled throughout the 70s, they had to leave, so only very few families 
are still there. It is uh, they were, uh, in opposition to the Palestinian case. But also, if you look at this other picture, so you may find other similarities. Uh, okay, this is not just the plan. This is the old Greek village and the new uh, church settlement in Yerchada. But now, let's talk with Istanbul today. So, why, why would you call a, uh, a settlement 1453? Okay. Uh, for those who are not it is the conquests of Constantinople uh, by, uh, by the second. So, it's indeed, it is a uh, conquest, and it can be seen. So, this is, of course, uh, this is the renders which uh, the developer all, uh, delivers to sell his property, uh, real estate here. So, it is kind of, it is, they say, well, it is nice to be surrounded with the forest. It's indeed, because it's illegal appropriation, I would call it an elite informality, so the way that land here has been appropriated. And it is indeed being built. So, I mean, you see it, it's, it is being built. So this is just almost half a year ago. It is now almost finished, the road, uh, road construction. But indeed, it's also, it's both towards the natural green belt of Istanbul and this working class neighborhood of Ayaza. So you may understand it uh, more. So, uh, and indeed, the, uh, the uh, recent urban development and the recent urban transformation of Istanbul is uh, perceived uh, strongly as a, as a process of dispropriation of the commons on the one hand side and of uh, the real, uh, well, they, um, uh, they said, uh, most of the uh, property owned by many people, particularly in the middle is have been made by these new legislations of 6306 and 5366, these are the uh, legislations of the last uh, seven, eight years. They, so these are, these laws can be interpreted in a way that they create a kind of a property of second class, a second class uh, real estate, which is very similar again to the Palestinian situation. So it, is, it has been legalized. I will not go much deeper into the details of it. Uh, so, <clears throat> another uh, interesting uh, I mean, process that's going on uh, so far in, in Turkey is uh, the, the whole resistance movement against the uh, hydroelectric uh, power plants, and they have uh, so the resistance against uh, the power plants, and so which uh, kind of disturbs uh, very severely. Uh, the uh, say changes uh, the natural courses of rivers uh, throughout Turkey, so in the Black Sea coast, in, um, in the Dasan area, and in the uh, Mediterranean uh, Towers area, has been indeed uh, able to uh, create a very interesting coalition. Uh, here you see, uh, this is Alakar in the Mediterranean. Uh, this is a group of people who have indeed left the big cities and began living uh, kind of back to the nature. Uh, uh, group, but here, for instance, on the Black Sea coast and also uh, down there in the Mediterranean coast, we see rather, uh, say, um, conservative Muslim women. And here we have in Dersim, Alevites. Particularly in the Dersim case, there's also the, the holiness of uh, the geographies, particular valleys, stones, uh, monuments, monuments of nature, which are regarded as holy. So the uh, the uh, uh, power plants do also destroy uh, these uh, ancestral uh, promises, but also, let's say, uh, typical ecological or leftist uh, activist movement. So, it's, it's, you see, there's a big variety uh, of uh, resistance. And here we can also go, uh, so the loss of the, the comments and the uh, mental loss, uh, the, uh, the psychological feeling uh, also. Uh, being dispropriated, not your personal private property as such, but also the loss of commons is also a very important uh, issue. So, uh, and of course, uh, the, uh, the Taksim uh, issue uh, has been uh, uh, become the culmination uh, a lot of that. Uh, so, uh, the occupied Gezi uh, uh, back two years ago uh, has been. Um, a major issue, and indeed, uh, all of uh, the uh, resistance to spatiocidal uh, politics in Turkey has culminated in the Occupy Gezi uh, movement. 
So these are, uh, so far this was just kind of a, I was scanning uh, things that might uh, have also come to your mind. There are, you can find, of course, uh, several other examples uh, as well. This was just kind of a, uh, uh, well, uh, recapturing uh, some of the obvious cases which might come uh, to our senses. And now I will, uh, as a historian, uh, I will deal with some uh, older uh, examples before I will deal with uh, the uh, area of my research. But are there questions so far? So I can talk. Okay, I just read the 21st uh, visual, they like 130. Yes. Just warning you, but still do uh, interrupt. Okay. Um, going quickly through uh, 19th century, so I, as I mentioned, uh, Islam has uh, witnessed a very radical cleansing of space. So, um, so uh, the let's say legislation uh, for it was done really from 1830s onwards, but operational capacities and financial capacities were not ready before 1850s. So from 1860s onwards, we see the, uh, let's say, the uh, coming of a new city. And it's always, whenever an area uh, is cleansed by fire, a totally new city emerges. So this is, you see, the, uh, this is the DNA of the uh, city of the Ancien Regime, which is built in woods, organic, just small pedestrian pass uh, passages. And here we see the, the newly uh, built up uh, modern city compatible with the coaches, horse coaches, uh, so in early 2000. They are much smaller uh, plots, but they are regular blocks. It is, yeah. um, so this kind of the modernization, the optimization of uh, the, um, the capital. So that's kind of, there are only few leftovers of that city indeed. Only mainly at the borders of the sort of peninsula and in Karnataka, you may still see that city. So this is the same picture from Balat, and so you can see again here in another, another scheme how uh, say severe that change was. But we should uh, note that uh, this 19th century, uh, cleansing how severe it was. Uh, it was not necessarily met with some resistance. So we should. Uh, uh, no, at first, and indeed, all other cities, like just go to uh, Belgrade or Sofia or Athens, which are all, say, um, <coughs> other nation states that has emerged uh, already in their um, nuclei, already in the 19th century, and has widened their. Uh, uh, their national territory with the Balkan War and even further during the First World War. They all did the same with their capital cities. Whatever in Istanbul has happened, uh, has happened in all other, let's say, uh, cities and in other post ottoman cities as well. And it has been, in general, uh, is, uh, recognized and accepted as the moder uh, modernization of cities. But it is, uh, in a way, uh, say, in terms of planning and architecture, uh, the beginnings of that totally erase and rebuild. And, but while erasing and rebuilding, it creates a new DNA for the city. So uh, there is nothing anymore recognizable.